So before we start the video, I want to give you guys an exclusive look behind the scenes with hair and makeup. Welcome back to another episode of The Balance Suite. I'm Panta, and this episode is all about what it takes to get approved for a luxury apartment in New York City. So you've always had aspirations to move to the Big Apple, the big city, the city that never sleeps. Well, guess what? You're not the only one. When it comes to moving to a major city, especially New York City, these premium apartments are in high demand, it's extremely competitive, and the application process is intense. So what I've done is put together a general guide of the application process, as well as some tips that can help you get approved for your apartment. So if this is something that you're interested in, then this is the episode for you. So we got a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get right to it documents. Let's take a look at some of the documents you're going to need to gather when submitting your application. The first thing is proof of identification. You're going to need an official ID. That's a state issue driver's license or a passport. Now those of you who are in the workforce, I hope that you have a good rapport with your boss because you may be required to submit a letter of employment. This is a letter that states where you're working, that you're currently working, and it can also include your title and your salary. The next thing is you may be required to submit two of your recent pay stubs. And that's not the only two things. The next two things they may ask you to submit is two months worth of bank statements. The last two things is two years of your tax returns. So now that you have all of these documents gathered, let's move on to the next phase. So the next area I think is often overlooked and devalued. And what I'm talking about is communication, comprehension, and basic office skills. So when it comes to communication, you have to understand that the application process is like a dance between you and the landlord or the management team. And it's a lot of back and forth calls, a lot of emails, tons and tons of emails. So the first tip is that you want to keep an open line of communication. The next thing when it comes to communicating is uh, having a level of professionalism. Again, this is the management team. They're still analyzing your application and determining whether you're a good candidate or not. So let's say they want some more proof of your finances and they Hey, Mr. or Mrs. Thing, we need you to submit some more uh, financial statements. And your response is, yo, yo, you see the drip. You see the bust down? Like, yo, yo, my bank account mad long. She talking about more proof, yo. Like, yo, I don't need to cap, yo. Like, my money law acts about me. I feel you, but um, you're going to need to have some level of professionalism. Check this out. According to the fair housing laws, be mindful because any of these things can hurt your chances of being approved. The next thing is comprehension. Throughout the application process, you will be required to complete a long list of tasks. It's important that you have an understanding of what's being requested. So the last thing is basic office skills. In today's time, a lot of these transactions are done online digitally. You will be required to email, CC your email, understand how to scan and upload. You may be asked to open up a PDF. They'll send you a form or your lease through a PDF and you're like, what? Now is not the time to try and figure out how to do basic office skills. So I'm just giving you a heads up. At this level of the game, they assume that you have basic skill sets. So the next section is all about the money. We're talking about the financial requirements and the cost and fees that come along with getting a luxury apartment in New York City. The first fee is going to be the application fee not bad, which comes in around $20. In New York, the income requirement is 45 times one month's rent. So a premium apartment in a affluent area in New York City will start off around 5,000. So that's what we're gonna use for an example. So 45 is the multiple, 45 times the five, you're looking at 225 
thousand dollars in annual income to meet the requirements now if you are a entrepreneur due to the volatility and the variable annual income landlords tend to think you're more high risk the landlord may ask you to get a cosign or a guarantor and that is basically someone who's willing to if you default on your rent they will cover the cost if you decided to use a realtor or a broker there is a fee in new york it's going to cost you 15 percent of the annual rent moving along security deposit in case you move out and damage the uh, department they'll be holding that that will equal to one month's rent and also you'll need to pay the first month's rent or sometimes they say the last either or let me let me activate my brain so let's go over some of the different scenarios and what it would cost so let's say you needed everything the, you needed a guarantor and you used a broker to get the apartment so five thousand for the security deposit five thousand for the first month's rent five thousand for using a institutional guarantor and nine thousand dollars that's at fifteen five five fifty the cost of a New York apartment can range from $10,000 all the way up to $24,000, depending on your scenario. The next area deals with the background check. So there's a series of background checks that the landlord may look into, and that includes a credit background check, a criminal background check, also um, personal references, and prior rental referrals so let's start with the credit so most landlords in New York City tend to want an applicant with good credit so according to the credit bureaus good credit is a score of 670 and up so the next area is the criminal background check and that's going to look into whether or not you have any major felonies or if you're a registered sex offender so next up, we have the rental history background check. So this is where the new landlord will ask you for the contact information of your prior landlord. Yeah. Now, some landlords in some buildings may require you to submit personal and professional reference letters. The personal will deal with more of your character and the professional will attest to your work experience and your skill sets. Now that you have passed all of the background checks, you have all the available funds and you meet all of the financial requirements, hey, it's approval time. Now hold off on the celebrations. My first apartment had a four page lease. I do not know if the luxury buildings in New York City at this time is using the Johnny Cochran firm because they sent me over a 62 page lease. I mean, it was like reading a small novel. I'm like, bruh, yes, the application process for getting approved for a New York luxury apartment is exhausting. However, the rewards outweigh the inconveniences. So I encourage everyone to keep on pushing and run the race at your own pace and do not allow time restraints to be an added burden. You'll eventually get there as long as you keep on grinding and keep on pushing. So the next thing I wanted to share is that this is just a guide. There are always exceptions to the rules. There's always anomalies. You shoot your shot. If you don't have any unrealistic expectations. If you miss, you're like, hey, I know what I have to do. So even if you're not at the point where you can even apply, you might be at the, I gotta fix my credit stage or I gotta save up some money to even cover the cost. Eventually you will get there. So I wanna send you an early congratulations and if you found any value or if this video helped to motivate you, the only thing I ask is that you send me an invite. <laughs> so once again, thank you for spending some time with me. I appreciate it. I love you neighbors and may peace be with you.